a me, Mario! <laughs> no, it's a me, the Nintendo Explorer. And if you want to see Mario battle the Rainbow Serpent or other adventures, check it out on my Instagram page. It's the Nintendo Explorer. I'll leave a link in the description below. And today, I'm here with my buddy in his car, GT Boy 1. Say hi, GT Boy 1. Hi! That's my game tester boy. He loves playing Nintendo games. All right, bye, buddy. On today's video, I'm going to discuss my five biggest disappointments for 2020. Correction, 2020 was a complete dumpster fire for everyone. There's plenty of disappointments to go around. I'm going to discuss my five biggest Nintendo-related disappointments for 2020. And at number five, no, 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 it's not Animal Crossing. Animal Crossing was pretty great, actually. But it would be the lack of software from Nintendo in 2020. Now, I know, I know, I know. 2020 was the year of the pandemic. And no one could put out anything. And there were lots of companies that were unfortunately were unable to put out the type of software that they wanted to put out. However, I would argue that coming into the year was already going to be a light year for Nintendo in terms of software. And the pandemic, well, I don't want to say it helped them. But it definitely coincidentally helped them mask what was going to be a light year. Now, if you look toward the ending of 2019, when all those rumors were circulating about a Nintendo Direct, and then even into January and February of 2020, we kept getting constant rumors about a Nintendo Direct. And that was, of course, because no one knew what games were going to come out from Nintendo in 2020. And everyone kept saying, we have no idea what Nintendo's going to do in 2020. There's nothing that they have listed. Well... They probably didn't have much listed because they didn't have much to begin with. Now, I know a few weeks before Paper Morgan the Origami King came out, they dropped the trailer, unveiling it, released it. Um, they had a couple of other smaller titles here and there throughout the year. We also had the Mario 3D All-Stars that was long rumored, finally revealed. We also had the Pikmin 3 Deluxe, the remake of Pikmin 3. And we had... The Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity come out as their big holiday game, but that one wasn't even made by them. So, pretty light year for Nintendo in 2020. Oh, those didn't happen. Rest in peace, Nintendo Directs. Moment of silence, please. And yeah, that's enough said, right? We don't really have to get much into that. But one thing what I will say is, I know that there was a pandemic. I completely understand why Nintendo didn't put out any general Nintendo Directs. But it doesn't mean that we don't have to be disappointed about it. And in a year like the year we had, it would have been nice to have something pretty cool as Nintendo Directs to keep us going. And my number three Nintendo 2020 disappointment is Smash DLC. Now, most of the characters that they've been releasing lately... Are pretty blah to me now that's not to say that they don't look good most of them look fantastic actually I'm sure the movesets are great and unique as well and the characters themselves are going to be fun to learn how to play as in the future however and I may be in the minority in this here but I miss when Smash was a celebration of Nintendo and its history and its characters Nintendo has so many characters so many unique characters too throughout its history to choose from and I feel like since they've opened it up to a celebration of video game history instead, third parties have been getting a lot of characters that just don't really have a huge presence on Nintendo systems themselves. For instance, let's look at Joker as an example. Now Joker looks great as a character and he's fun to play as and I'm happy for the fans of that character and that franchise itself, but Persona 5 and Persona as a whole has mostly been a Sony franchise. Now again, I'm happy for the fans of all these characters, and but a lot of these third party characters have been pretty meh to me. I could care less about them. I don't really love them. I don't hate them, don't love them. I'm happy for the fans. I'm happy for the fans of the characters. I'm happy for the fans of the franchises that they belong to. And it's great to see them. Move sets are fun. But as a whole, I'd much rather wait for some Nintendo franchises to be represented here as opposed to more of these third-party guys. And then, of course, we're still hearing stuff about Crash Bandicoot and other characters like that. I mean, those are characters, again, they were born in Sony systems. I'd much rather leave Nintendo or Smash Brothers for franchises, at least franchises that were born in Nintendo systems. I mean, if you want to go third-party, that's cool. But let's pull some third-party franchises that have a strong presence in Nintendo. Now, speaking of Smash, 
Let's, let's start a petition, okay? Let's go out there. Let's get the Amazon on Smash, okay? And if you don't know who the Amazon is, check out my Instagram page. Go look up the Nintendo Explorer. Amazon's in there. Let's get Amazon on Smash. Right? It's me, Mario. Oh, yeah, so that's how that's supposed to sound, okay? Well, I'm pretty sure my Mario impersonation sounded just like that. You guys almost don't even know the difference, right? So my number two Nintendo 2020 disappointment is going to be Mario 3D All-Stars. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking the same thing that everyone else was saying. But that's not even my complaint. I'm not even going to argue or complain about the games themselves. You know what? Would it have been great had Nintendo remade the games themselves with updated graphics and updated control systems and everything? Of course. Wouldn't it have been fantastic to see Mario 64 with a new control system, better camera, and upgraded visuals? Definitely. How much better would Mario Galaxy look now if it was remade with HD graphics from the ground up? I mean, of course, all of that is fantastic. I would have loved to seeing all of that just like everyone else would have. But my actual disappointment was not the games themselves. It was the presentation of the games. And what I mean by that is they didn't even put a booklet in there. How hard would it have been or how great would it have been had there been a booklet in there, you know, celebrating Mario's 35th with the... um some of the artwork over the years, some of the characters over the years, bringing up his history all along. Heck, you could even have broken it down through by the book, so you could have had a 64 art book, a Mario Sunshine art book, and a Galaxy art book, and what the future might hold for Mario. Nintendo didn't do any of that. They didn't update the, um, the case for the game or anything. There was no artwork inside the case. There were no booklets inside the case. There was nothing else with the package. It was an empty case, just like all the other Switch games that would have come before them. And this was Mario's 35th anniversary we were talking about. Come on, Nintendo. Come on. You've got to do better than that. Nintendo, do better in the future. You can do it. And that brings us to number one. Now, as a quick sidebar, I was actually going to do some weird uh, sound effects as I came in with the numbers. Like, for instance, right now, I would have said, number one. But I just, uh, I forgot to do it. Uh, I know I can see all the disappointment in everyone's face right now. Maybe we'll bring that back in uh, future videos. But anyway, to, uh, to get to it, number one is going to be Labo, right? So, Labo 2020 would have been the perfect year for Labo, right? Like... In a year when everyone was stuck at home, when everything was shut down, when schools were closed, when people and parents were out there looking for ways to um, entertain each other or entertain their children or be creative and educational with their children, um, Labo would have been it. Like, Labo was perfect. Like, Labo is the perfect pandemic software, right? So it's almost as if um, Nintendo released Labo too soon for its own good, right? Like, like Labo would have been great for 2020 and now i actually i say this as a person who never actually played labo or used labo now in fairness i have a valid excuse for that right like my oldest son who's 16 now well he's into his xbox he's been into his xbox for the last few years so um he actually doesn't really care about nintendo and would not have been into it and wasn't into labo like right like, like that's not his thing and my youngest son well at that time he would have been one or going on one so he would have been too young to really know about Labo or know about video games or really know how to do Like he would not have, even if it entertained him for a little bit, he really wouldn't have been comprehending it or understanding it. Well, today, well, here, here, I'll show you. You did it? I got it! Yeah! I'm stronger! I got muscles! <laughs> muscles! So yeah, I'd say he's ready for the uh, Labo experience. And you know what? In the future, we'll do some Labo unboxings and we'll explore Labo. And we'll do that in some future videos. And um, there's one more reason actually why. How cool would it have been if in a year where Microsoft and Sony both released new systems, right, where you could see something like this, right? 
Microsoft releases a brand new Xbox series, whatever, whatever it is, because it's got the weirdest name in the world. State of the art, future of gaming. Sony releases the new state of the art, future of gaming console. And Nintendo releases cardboard. And cardboard outsells them both. Right, like, come on, Nintendo, you dropped the ball there. Well, that's it. That's the top five. Let me see some of you guys' top five. And until next time, keep exploring and stay safe.